Hey guys, this is Chaos Beals Tape, and today you join me for episode 2 of series 2 of Elu Base. And today we start around Duna, which is a little odd for an Elu Base, but if you remember from the last episode, I uh, managed to salvage the Project Duna spacecraft from a very old series I did on the same save. Um, so now I decided that I'd use it as a secondary carrier, because I have already created one carrier, I thought maybe having two would be even better, um, so that I can ferry through large amounts of things out to Elu fairly easily. So I'm just um, preparing to make the burn to bring this back, and that was a quick test burn, and you see it went off centre pretty quickly, because that annoying lander on the side, because that is the only thing I have with a probe core around Juno without having to send a rescue craft, which I very much don't want to do. Because it weighs quite a lot, it'll like pull it off, um, pull it off course slightly, which will be annoying. Uh, but um, I can control that just about, if I burn slightly less. But when now we're uh, doing the, um, the main burn out to Juno, out to Juno? No, out to Kerbin. That would be ridiculous to come right back. And now the burn is over because I skipped ahead because it was quite a long burn and um, you don't really need to see it. You've seen lots of interplanetary burns, especially in, well, the last series of Elo at least. Freaking loads. But it was only about 500 um, delta V because even in this high orbit it is very easy to get back to Kerbin because we just kind of drop ourselves down. And we have the encounter so that's all good. Um, and I still have quite a bit of fuel left because, well, a little bit of fuel, but like well, probably about 400 delta V if I need to make a course correction. But I think I'm going to air break this around Juno. Because I, around freaking Kerbin. Keep screwing that up. I'm drunk. Joking. Ish. <laughs> yeah, school's really hard. Anyway, we'll just leave that going back to Kerbin. Um, and then, uh. And then we'll. We're going to go, go away and do some other stuff so that, uh. So that I'm not wasting time. So, to the space center. And now to cut this footage, hopefully. Yes, right, cutting to the next launch of some hardware that needs to go onto the main carrier, which will be departing for ELU rather soon, maybe? I'm not sure when the ELU transfer is. Annoyingly, I left um, Ferrum Aerospace on, so it's annoying doing the gravity turns because you have to be all, like, gradual about it or it flips out. Um, it does make it slightly easier to get out of the atmosphere because it's thinner, um, so the launch vehicles have a slightly higher ca lifting capability, but that's neutered by the fact that I have to carry freaking fairings or everything screws up. So, um, we're just moving into position so that we have um, have an encounter, and that's pretty good. It's kind of a usual thing where instead of doing annoying real-world orbiting, I um, uh, I just kind of go for the target, just fly at it. Anyway, this is at four times tail time accelerator, of course. Um, I've ditched the last stage with a bit of fuel in it because I just don't need it, and I don't want to be lugging it around. And the fairings have been ditched, and you definitely won't have seen what's on the end of there because it's in the night time, because I want to do the docking in the light side, um, and because YouTube will darken this, and I may brighten it just maybe a bit for here. Um, but anyway, we've got a pretty close encounter. Uh, I just need to kill off most of my relative velocity and uh, mainly get to orbit. But anyway, I've skipped ahead, and now it is sunrise over Kerbin, and we are heading into the carrier core, which is actually just a carrier. I don't know why it's still called core. I assume I just haven't renamed it. Um, this is a little late, actually. It has been a little while since I've done this because I haven't. F well, I've been busy and I haven't particularly felt like recording this. I did put up some uh, the Rescale Kerbin Project Space Station, I International Space Station. I've forgotten the name of the series already, um, but you can go check that out. Um, I tried to upload videos as much as possible, but uh, I am a fairly busy person, and sometimes I just don't really feel like playing video games. But anyway, um, this is moving in. What this actually is, as you can see it now, is a docking thing um, that'll go on the end of the ELU station, um, the Andromeda station, because I need more docking ports. So this is four standard docking ports, and um, which, and it will go on the end of the station, um, on the big docking port, and it does have another big docking port, so I still will have one. But the carrier will never be docked to the Andromeda station, because it's horrible to dock, and because of frame rates. There's even pretty bad frame rates right now, that's awful considering how much my computer cost. Don't want to have to buy new stuff, it's really expensive. <laughs> but anyway, that is very nice sedate docking, and one times time accelerate because I just slow it down occasionally for lack of consistency. Because being consistent is not what small channels need. Anyway, we have skipped ahead to the, um, uh, to the, uh, to the, the next probe coming up. Um, I've warped it into launch in the daytime because I forgot about docking at night time but hey you'll get to see the 20 seconds of launch I've left in um, because 
well oof, um I, I i i why can't i think of the words but i left it in i i cut the launch because you don't want to see it again i am it's going to be one of those days so don't expect too much good but anyway i have cut that because you've already seen a launcher of the exact same rocket with a slightly different payload now what this is is an experimental hardware the scientists have made me take with me oh no not the scientists the oil barons because this is a Keythane Miner, an autonomous one that will land and stay on the surface, and other things will dock to it and take the fuel up to the station, or just refuel. Um, anyway, uh, oh, I switched um, I, sw I switched control to the docking port and completely lost where I was. This is a all at four times time accelerate, because this takes a little while, because um, there were loads of problems with it. There were just, it was I screwed up everything. As you can see right now, the electric charge is running down. I didn't see this at the time because I tunnel vision was just flying the spacecraft. Luckily it does have a solar panel, however I will not be able to deploy it when the uh, electric charge runs down, so uh, that's good. And as uh, we move into the carrier, we're almost hitting it, um, I, I start to realize this about now when it runs out and then it's dead in the water, I wonder what's going on. And then I realized, and then I almost reverted flight, and I was like, no, I should probably, I should, and then I paused for a long period of time. There you go, that wasn't that long. Um, anyway, so I fly out the one Kerbal on board, he must be getting pretty lonely, to uh, to extend the solar panel, and uh, give it some power. That looked nice at one time to time accelerate, but not at four times, because time constraints and editing and camera focus and camera words that make me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway. Uh, I've got to keep checking the time because my uh, microphone wasn't working properly earlier. Anyway, now it has power, I can fly it in to the carrier. Although this has taken so long that um, we're almost at sunset, so I won't be able to use that for long. And I won't be able to use it during the docking because it will smash off if I put it in the cargo bay. Because I am putting this in the cargo bay because um, because that's cool. Well, I don't know that cool is the right word, but you know, it's interesting. And there's no space on the top docking port because uh, that other thing's taking it up and I didn't have the foresight to put some stuff on it. And because um, I want to utilize that carrier, the, the cargo bay I've put so much effort into, um, I, I was just making sure that the thing wasn't rotating because I was getting a little nervous now. And I tried to switch off the torque. That goes badly. Um, I It completely stops me doing everything because it's the SES is using RCS to bounce it out. So it, it's just fighting me for control, and then I try turning it off, then I realized it's completely unbalanced. So then I give it um, full uh, um, control again, and I have a very big time constraint, because I have 30 units of electric charge, and um, very little time, and no sun or any power generation. Uh, but if the worst comes to the worst, I could maneuver the carrier onto the, um, onto the, the miner, but that wouldn't be fun, considering how unmaneuverable it is, and how I have to maneuver a cargo bay around a really awkwardly shaped thing. And now, in a minute, I just kind of get bored and try and brute force it into the carrier, because that's the best way to do everything. So anyway, we are moving in, and that gets, oh, that was very um, smooth at one times time, at four times time accelerate. It wasn't, however, at one times time accelerate. Anyway, you can see it sticking out a little bit, but the important things, um, except the drill, will be protected from micro-asteroid damage, probably. The science words. Anyway, that looks nice, and it is well needs to be reloaded with Kerbals, and uh, sent to Elu. Talking of Elu, we are currently on Elu with the uh, Keythane Miner. This is a Keythane Miner I landed in the last series, the one that's manned and all autonomous and doesn't stay on the surface, and I need some more fuel. So we must deploy those drills. Um, there is almost also quite a bit of fuel uh, in here because I started out recording this and then actually unplugged my computer when I meant to un unplug my amplifier so I could um, charge my phone. But uh, but um, that didn't go well. And my computer stopped and then the recording corrupted. So you've still got some stuff. Uh, anyway, I need to, given that there is um, already full key thing in here, I need to start converting it into fuel and oxidizer. Uh, which is too much for my electric charge to handle, but never matter because it does it just in time for me to start mining Keythane again. Um, and annoyingly, at uh, like a thousand times time accelerate, the animations for the Keythane drills still happen at normal speed. So like, they're just gonna be, um, what was I gonna say? I'm, oh, it's, I'm sorry about this. Um, so I waste time when I'm time warping and dropping the drills or raising the drills 
But anyway, now I need some RCS because I want to fill up my RCS tanks and then fill up my ketane tanks and then fly to the station and refuel the station so that that can refuel other spacecraft. Um, eventually, I'll probably have some la landers on the surface like that um, thing I've just put in the carrier, which will mean things can refuel at the surface, but not at the other base because um, there's no ketane there and that's, you know, a problem. But I could take a landable fuel tank and I have some plans. I have some... Uh, some, some pretty cool plans. Anyway, we're still mining ketane, and we're still creating monopropellant, but that is done, and the ketane is mined, and the power is back. Um, and the far flight systems are blocking the view of the Kerbals, because I don't ever have anywhere to put all my UI, because I use too much UI stuff. And far is, uh, has a, like, a fairly bulky UI. But anyway, that is that refueled, and that is everything done for this episode. It's actually felt rather quick. I think it will be a longer episode next time. Maybe. But anyway, this will be flying to the station next time, and there'll probably be me some going to Elu with carriers and things. Um, if you've liked this video, feel free to like this video. That would be wonderful. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.